Diffy is is successful for a number of reasons. I would say for the very first reason though, is because we weren't looking to invent a company. It was literally born out of solving a systemic problem. Up until uh, two and a half years ago, I was at a law firm in Houston, um, trying to make a partner um, and working a lot <laughs> and working with all the different financial institutions as we were uh, one of the prominent firms there in Houston. So worked with all of them. Uh, and saw all the different methods and then got a random phone call from a very uh, persistent recruiter who did the research knowing uh, my wife was from Utah and I have a BYU on my resume and so uh, I took the call and left my firm three weeks before I made a partner and uh, joined Wells Fargo right after a scandal came out so it was great timing. Um, but in all seriousness, just the innovation story, mine's obviously different in that we're part of a, one of the largest uh, banks for any company in the country, and we're trying to innovate here in Utah. So. Finicity is, uh, you know, financial transaction access and the analytics mostly focused around helping individuals and, and companies make smarter financial decisions. And we really have started to spend a lot of time in the credit decisioning swim lane because uh, uh, there's a lot of friction in that process and a significant amount of, of work that can be done there to innovate and to make that a much better process for consumers. So uh, MX, we power uh, now 2,000 uh, banks and credit unions, which are the largest uh, player in the space by far. We got the company about nine years ago. Um, and we just announced, I think, yesterday day before, that we just raised uh, $100 million uh, in our Series B. Talk about the differences of managing or founding a company in financial tech versus just technology in general. What are the what are the unique challenges to fintech? The fintech ecosystem is absolutely on fire because there's been such an incredible lack of innovation in the space. It, it's building software that can be, one, virally adopted, and two, and what I believe is way more important than viral adoption, is habitually used. And FinTech right now is, is, is fraught with uh, problems of, of current workflows in B2B or B2C that are just crap. They're 18 click processes that for some reason we still acknowledge that are fine and, and why when in consumer technology we have beautifully well designed applications or platforms that actually add value and value can actually be fun. Uh, there, there's an argument that just enjoyment and fun and delight is value enough but then on the other side there's legitimate value to our lives and yet in B2B, B2B applications um, there's just this, this lag of innovation. Our view is that you don't have to be in fintech you don't have to have come from fintech to actually innovate and create great solutions in fintech and getting that balance in an organization of great thinkers that can just come in and look at a problem, any kind of a problem, and talk about innovative options and solutions and maybe even bring outside industry experience into that and perspective has been really, really helpful for us. So if any of you are thinking about, well crap, I don't even really understand how the payment space or the banking space or is payroll, whatever it may be, that, that's actually an advantage you have uh, because you can go in with just an incredible amount of creativity. Uh, the other side that we saw when looking way more historically and specifically at the bank industry is that they had a, I mean, it's fairly obvious once I say it, their approach was first to banking services and then software, okay? And so banking services on, uh, sorry. Oh, let yeah, it, yeah. bring it, yeah. bring it, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so it, banking services like any type of lending facility, lines of credit loans, right, is gonna be, they're gonna win you on customer service, they're gonna win you on some kind of cash back, right? And then they're, they're gonna build out a software function um, and, and the engineers and the software function that they build into their ecosystem is really a support system and doesn't have the creativity, the engine drive um, to go and innovate. Plus they can't because infrastructurally they just have too much red tape. Um, when you invert that two-part system of first software and then banking services, 
is where uh, some pretty serious magic happens. When experiences are prioritized with your uh, end user and your buyer in mind, and then you figure out again how to layer in uh, the, the credit system, maybe it's debit, maybe it's prepaid, maybe it's um, data play, yeah, that, that's where some magic can happen and that's where we've seen incredible success. Yeah, and I'll piggyback off of that. Just the idea of being able to innovate in a massive organization that's really, really hard. It's possible, and we're trying to do it in a few different ways, specifically here in Utah and banking outdoors in California to make it happen. But it's really hard. It's really hard. And that's something I underestimate coming from you know, a law firm or as an attorney, even though it's a big organization, you have freedom to do whatever. Yep. Like there is zero compliance at law firms, ironically. Yep. And so um, coming to a big organization, you're just like, wait, Someone has to review my 45 page PowerPoint. Yeah. Like, and it's going to take him two months. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. And so, as you try to break down these doors, it is possible, but it's really hard. And I think that's why, you know, everyone else up here, um, why you're all here is they're successful because of that, that issue of a big bureaucracy, red, red tape, heavily regulated, yeah. whereas you guys can innovate outside of the stronger bounds of regulation that a big uh, bank, especially in the current environment, yep. faces. Regulation is a big, big deal in banking. And so what's happened is access to data has changed that. Because a lot of the startups, like if you look at the fintech area, um, where Divi plays and a lot of others, if they couldn't get access to data or play with uh, being able to provide these cards and things that used to be a lot more difficult to do, the cost of entry is lowered. And now companies can come in and innovate rapidly and then rapidly scale um, to really impressive sizes with these new solutions. And so it, what we've seen change with these new banks versus in, uh, the neo banks, uh, uh, nouveau banks compared to the, the existing infrastructure is that the existing infrastructure is also built in a mentality of uh, if you try anything new and you fail, you're done. If you try something new and it does something amazing, that's cool. Right? Where, where, but, but you don't get much credit for it, no one really cares. And so there's this huge penalty for failure and not much of a reward for upside. It's the polar opposite of tech, which is, hey, fail, just fail quickly, own it, admit it. We're banking, it's like, don't own it, don't own it, don't own it. So this is deny and defend for a while. And by the way, healthcare is the same way. Healthcare is not good at quickly owning their mistakes either. Um, and so those two industries have been very adverse or allergic to innovation. That's rapidly changing right now, and we're going to see it accelerate more and more in the future. The best banks are going to basically turn into more and more of a fintech, and the rest are going to die. And then the, the, the fintechs are going to scale and learn that they have to live in a somewhat regulated world, and they're going to adjust their models and grow up and mature, and eventually you're not going to have what looks like a bank or a fintech. You're going to have this new entity that's going to be this new version of what a bank is, and it's going to be a painful transition for both sides. The fuel in all of this is, is, is data, right? It's going to be something to watch, really, because it's coming fast, it's coming hard, and the amount of money now being spent both inside large organizations and outside in the fintech uh, community worldwide is really stunning to watch. And so, you know, the need is there. We're just getting started. I would say that, uh, really, and I would be interested to, to get your, your all opinion, I think that we're, we're really just, we've just started. Well, thank you, everyone.